Did we do it? Did we come back from 2 HP? Did we do it, chat? Yeah, I mean, he's got to he's got to crack two of them. He's taking 18 damage. Okay. GG. You guys ready? So eight. Boom. Put that down. And then double vision. That down. I like that. I like those two, those turn four Ugans. All right, this is Vito, my boy. Vito, my boy. Probably just gonna call it uh, Vito's Revenge, right? Vito's Revenge makes more sense. Um, so this is my original deck idea when I first saw Vito. Uh, so Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose, three mana. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. It's just a 1-3 legendary vampire cleric. We don't really care about the fact that it's a creature. Outside of that, it's really easy to kill. But whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. We're using this in conjunction with Revival Revenge. Revenge, we get to double our life total, and then target opponent loses half their life. Pretty simple. If we're at 10, opponent's at 20, we swap life totals. So I double my life total to 20, opponent halves theirs to 10. And then if we have Veto out, we are gaining 10 life. So opponent takes 10 damage or loses 10 life rather. It's not damage. They lose 10 life, so they lose. It's a one, it's a two turn combo or a two card combo. Uh, it's relatively expensive. I know people hate two card combos, but it's still really funny. So I recommend it. Um, we have Dawn of Hope. This is just for card draw, token generation. Stuff that's good. Revitalize, amazing, three mana draw card. Uh, Birth of Miletus, early blocker, thin out your deck, get a planes, gain a little bit of life just in case. Uh, the revival, or part of Revival Revenge. This allows us to actually go and get a veto from our graveyard and put it in the battlefield if it's dead. Uh, Grim Tutor. This enables us to search our library for any card, put it into our hand, and shuffle the library. Do lose three life, so we do have to really worry about that, especially in standard. Um, Shadow of the Sky, board wipe. Pious Wrath, board wipe. I like to have as many board wipes as possible. Everybody knows that by now. Uh, there's just so many aggro decks. If you don't have eight board wipes, it's very risky to go into best of one. Uh, we have three E2 extinctions. This is just really good. It helps smooth out our next draw uh, because there just isn't anything here to really smooth out your draw outside of the temple lands, which is just kind of bleh. So we have E2 extinction there. Ill-gotten inheritance. This is just pressure every single time. So technically this one enchantment it deals one damage to the player. We gain a life, but if we have veto out, you know, deal damage to them, we gain a life and then they lose a life. So we gain a life, they take two damage. It's pretty good, you do that every turn. And then once you get up to six mana, you can crack it, deal four damage to them, we gain four life, and then they lose four life as a result of that. So it's four mana recurring every turn, and then six mana, eight damage to them. Just no joke, pretty good. Um, then Kai's Wrath again, just board wipes. Heliod's Intervention, this just kind of sends Vito over the top. Um, but it, again, it's a really fun deck. I think this one probably has the most potential. I believe Orzov is the most uh, the most consistent when it comes to a deck like this. And that's why my original one was Orzov, uh, but it also utilized Revival Revenge. Or sorry, not Revival Revenge, Primal Amulet with Revival Revenge to multicast it. Um, but now that we don't need Primal Amulet, we just have Vito. 
this changes the game significantly. So I cannot wait to get this into a historic. So stay tuned for that. It just sucks because the thoughts that I had in my mind, I was like, oh yeah, I can actually do this in standard. And then when I go to build it, I didn't realize there was cards that I that were somewhat pivotal in the deck that aren't in standard. <laughs> it's like, oh. I mean, we can search for a planes, right? We can tutor for a planes. Hello. Need an evil villain emote? That is not a land. Chat, give me a land. I need a white source. White source. Perfect. <laughs> Three mana. Three mana get a land. Or three mana, three life, get a land. Ow. I feel like I have no life. Like, I mean HP, not like in real life. <laughs> um, okay. I'm gonna thin out my deck a bunch here. If we survive till next turn, if we may we may be able to pull this off okay better revitalize that's pretty good So we can just revitalize into an E2 extinction. That's not, that's not healthy. All right. We have possibly stabilized. We're keeping Akaya's Wrath. We're hoping that human token overextends with creatures. It's pretty good. So we can Wrath and Dawn of Hope, which is kind of nice. We gain two life from the Wrath.
Yeah, we'll just do that again. Hopefully they can't do 36 damage in one turn. You got it. Destroy that wall. Play the other Ember Hauler. Do it. Whoop. It's only if it's a goblin, right? Yeah, it's going to be nasty somehow. Okay. I mean, that wins us the game. Four, five, six, seven. Okay. Uh, I need to kill that because that's a lot of uh, card draw. It's too much card draw that we can't allow them to have. So we win next turn. Unless they can gain life or kill us. <sighs> okay. Got him. That was pretty good. We got down to like four HP. That was terrifying. We got two revenges, but we didn't have a veto that whole time. It's hard because I want to play my veto out early for a blocker, but I know it's just going to die, you know? So I don't want to do it at the same time. Well, ooh, it's a sweet avatar. Combo has been assembled. Combo assembled. We just need nine mana. Can't let them have the Risen Wraith, and cutting down one of their mana sources is probably nice. Better than them having two. That's still very bad. It's a lot of ramp. I don't want to use my E2 extinction because I feel that they're ramping into Ugin. You know what I mean? Neoform. I see. That was cool. 
I did not expect Neoform. Damn it. Had another one. Fuck. Two, three, four, five, six. Please don't kill it. Please don't kill it. You're fine. You can let it live for a turn. Fine. Fine. Okay. I was like, is this an enchantment creature? That would have been super sad. Okay. Don't kill it. It's eight damage. We're not going to kill them, though. That's the problem. Oh, that sucks. Hmm. It's so only going to gain two life. They're going to take a lot of damage, but we're only going to gain two life. Hmm. Oh, come on. Need more life gain. Need more life gain. Oh. Too close to dead. Please don't have a third questing beast in your hand. Oh, no. Have to kill that, obviously. What a Pablo. Um, can't do that because I'll die. Can't do that because I'll die. Or come really close to dying. Yeah, I'm 21 time. We're having problems gaining life. Um. We haven't been able to really pull off the combo yet. Oh, it's bad. Uh they can play pretty much whatever they want. Synergy. Got it.
No, uh, one, two, three. Yeah, that's fine. So I gotta put in a. Oh, this is this is getting very dangerous very quickly. Three, four, five, six. Okay, so if we need to, we can pop ill-gotten inheritance. If we need to. Not sure if we do yet. It would be quite a bit of damage. It would be eight damage to him if we did it. At least I don't have like an ember cleave. <laughs> like, please don't have something that scares me. We take those. Take those too. Four, eight. Four, eight, nine. Rar, <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Please don't have a kill spell for my veto. Did we do it? Did we come back from two HP? Did we do it, chat? Yeah, I mean he's got to he's got to crack two of them. It's taking eighteen damage. Yeah, <laughs> we're doing it. <laughs> oh, maybe we should add more Heliods. This was the Life Ripper deck that we made. Uh, it's kind of a play on the Orzov one that we made. It'll be somewhere in this video. Um, but uh, people in chat really wanted to make it in Abzan. Basically just wanted to throw in green. Uh, so we threw in Gift of Paradise. This just turns Vito into a lightning bolt um, when you play gift of paradise um, so we'll kind of go through the cards primarily this deck revolves around veto thorn of the dusk rose new card in m21 uh, it's a legendary creature one three vampire cleric um, has a passive of whenever you gain life target opponent loses that much life sounds kind of innocuous little pings here and there you know um, and then it has three colorless, double black creatures you control, gain lifelink till end of turn. We don't play creatures here. We're we're tap out control enchantment shitty combo decks. You know, so we don't play creatures, right? So that part's irrelevant. We care about the first part. Now it's this in conjunction with revenge. So revenge, double your life total. Target opponent loses half their life, round it up. So let's say we're at 10 life, opponent's at 20. We double our life total, which is 10 HP. Opponent loses half their life, so they go down to 10 HP. Since we have Veto out, we gain 10 HP, and then we make the opponent lose 10 HP after they already lost 10 HP, so they die. It's a two-card combo, and I get it. Most people say that's fucking lame. 
but it's a funny combo. <laughs> does it that does it make it better? Does it make it any better? Um, alternatively, you can use Heliod's Intervention if you just get a shit ton of mana on the board. You can gain twice X life. If you have Veto out, you just end up doing a bunch of damage. Um, also, you have Life Goes On, so you gain four life. If a creature died this turn, you gain eight life instead. Uh, this has some synergy with Dawn of Hope, so if you're swinging in uh, to a big creature, just gain some life, whatever, it dies... Boom. Life goes on. We gain 8 life, and we deal 8 damage to the opponent for 1 mana. 1 mana. So it's pretty cool. Again, I think a lot of people are using this with sack outlets like Cat Oven. They'll like sacrifice the cat to the oven, and then they'll play Life Goes On uh, when they have Veto out, and it does a shit ton of damage. You can basically just die in 2 turns. Um... We have Dawn of Hope. This is just for general token generation. Um, when we gain life, pay two, you draw a card. Um, four mana, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token with life. It's pretty good. It's a good mana dump later on in the game. Uh, Revitalize. This is just gain three life, draw a card. Amazing card. I love it. Um, later on in the game, Veto. It's a two mana bolt, but you also get to draw a card. And you gain three life. So it's like gain three life, deal three damage, draw a card for two mana. It's pretty good. Um, also, the revival part of Revival Revenge, you can return target creature guard with converted mana costs three or less from a graveyard to the battlefield. Since Vito only costs three, Vito dies, and we don't have another one in our hand, but we have another Revenge or Grim Tutor or something. We could just revival and put Vito into the into the battlefield and then revenge the next turn or something like that. Uh, or if we have like a Heliod's intervention in our hand, we don't care about the revival revenge. You can do that. Uh, Grim Tutor. This is a really cool card. Uh, it's three mana. Search your library for a card. Put that card in your hand. Shuffle your library. You lose three life. It sucks to lose three life, but once we get this card into Historic, once we get this deck into Historic, it's going to be a whole nother level. Whole nother level. Uh, we're using the Black Mythos. Uh, this is great because you destroy target non-land permanent uh, if you cast uh, if you cast it with green and white. So if you do green, white, black, you can destroy any non-land permanent. If you don't, it has to be a creature. So it kind of sucks. Uh, it's like a shitty Maelstrom Pulse, um, except this is instant. But, you know, whatever. Um, Gift Paradise just there for mana fixing and ramp. Uh, Shatter the Sky, Board Wipe, because you need Board Wipes. Uh, Kai's Wrath, again, Board Wipes, but this also gains us life, uh, which can, I don't know, gain us life. We could draw cards from Dawn of Hope if we have it, or it just keeps us alive in general. Then, of course, Heliod's Intervention. We could destroy X target artifacts or enchantments, or we get to gain twice X life. Um, and then, of course, since this is standard, the reason I'm playing Standard in the pre-release event is because no one plays Historic in the pre-release events. Last time I did it, I was in queue for seven minutes. I still didn't even get a match. So I was just like, fuck it. And I just closed out of it. I just didn't want to wait anymore. It was just, it's not worth the wait to wait at least seven minutes between each match. It's just a waste of time. So um, obviously the, man, the mana base fucking sucks. It's just Shocklands and Scrylands. It's... It's not good. Um, and so, I, again, I can't wait to get this into Historic. But yeah, that's the Life Ripper deck. Honestly, I think we need more board wipes. Way to have faith in Twitch chat? I don't. When it comes to, like, the Revival Revenge baby that I made, it's really hard for me to believe in Twitch chat. We have no black sources. It's fine. We'll top deck it eventually. Top deck, two of them. Oh, it's a puppy. Where did this one all of a sudden... So green, red... I don't know what that is. Sure.
Hyper Bear. Sounds like the name New Age Agrotech. New metal band? It's definitely a new metal band. Um do I kill that? I feel like I kill that, right? Yeah. Yeah, that would have been a big boy. Hmm. Maybe I should have vetoed before I did that? It's a good shatter. It's a good shatter. How much removal do you think they have? Don't kill it. Don't kill it. Don't you dare kill it. Okay. Okay. GG. You guys ready? Gashi? I have no idea. Not familiar. Hello. Puppy. Sure. Take more scry lands, I suppose. Standard has tools. Tepfri is still the biggest tool. That's fair. Fuck Tepfri. Hmm. have a board wipe and target removal. Don't know if we need one right now, and they didn't play a creature yet. So I think we're okay. I haven't decided if I want to shock this in just to hold up at those or not. Oh, let's put this as, put this in as a blocker. Because Mythos is not a multicolored spell, so it still kills Stone Coil Serpent. Uh... 
trying to decide if I kill that yet or not. I need to, I just don't know when I need to. I'm gonna just draw a card here. Hmm. So one, two, three. Boom. Wait, did I not tap that right? Did not tap that right, apparently. Because he would have died had that been... Oh yeah, because I didn't actually... Because it's a creature, I didn't need to tap it for that. Didn't need to tap it for that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What up, McNasty? What up, DeBruce? Sorry, right. I'll do the I'll do the punt commands for you guys. What's with all these fight things. Oh wait, I thought it... I thought it was fighting. Just kidding. I thought it was fighting. It did not fight. So this was the mono red Genesis ultimatum deck that we were playing. I think we got the ultimatum off once, if I'm not mistaken. Didn't work as well as I had imagined in my thinking noodle. Um, but after a couple changes, I think it was a little bit better. Uh, the most demoralizing part of the story, but we'll get into it, we'll, we'll talk about it. So we have four thrill possibilities. This is really just for card draw because in mono red, you just need the card draw. So. Throw a possibility is fantastic. Discard a card usually, especially later on in the game. You'll either discard a mountain or usually an iron crag feet because you don't really need the mana at that point in time. You have chromatic lantern. This is basically the only way you can cast Genesis Ultimatum. So uh, throw a possibility, you know, you discard a card, draw two cards. It's pretty simple. It's instant. You do it at the end of their turn. You can kind of bluff any type of burn spell, um, that sort of thing. Uh, Iron Craig Feet, it's four mana, add seven red sources. You can only cast one more spell this turn. This is amazing, right? So turn three, Chromatic Lantern. Turn four, Iron Craig Feet into an Ugin in mono red. Turn four, Ugin on mono red. It's pretty obscene. So uh, you have Storm's Wrath, this is just for general board wipes. Uh, Double Vision, this is a really cool card that I kind of want to tweak with and mess around with a little bit more. Uh, but whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery spell each turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for that copy. So this is really cool because it's just like an instant you get to copy a spell every turn. Chandra 6, this is fantastic. 6 mana, comes in with 6 loyalty. Can't be countered, that's very important. Uh, her plus 2 ability, uh, she... Each opponent gets an emblem. That's the key part. The opponent gets the emblem, where at the beginning of your upkeep, this emblem deals one damage to you. So they own the emblem. Fiery Emancipation was the other card that we were experimenting with. So this is if a source you control, you control, would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals triple that damage to that permanent or player instead. I thought there was a synergy between Chandra's plus and the Fiery Emancipation, 
That would have been so fucking amazing. But it wasn't, and I was forever sad. I was forever sad. Um, but it was fun. It still works kind of well sometimes-ish. Um, but a lot of times people ended up surrendering before we could go super off. Um, Genesis Ultimatum. Again, this is really just to get our permanents out on the battlefield. So Genesis Ultimatum, we can only cast if we have Chromatic Lantern out, so you got to keep that in mind. Um, you look at the top five cards of your library, put any number of permanent cards from among them onto the battlefield and the rest into your hand. And you exile Genesis Ultimatum. Um, so this is just good because we can get our Ugin, Fire Emancipation, Chandra, Double Vision, um, Lantern, some lands. There's a bunch of stuff we can do. And then we have uh, Ugin, the Spirit Dragon. This is a newer one in M21. Uh, it's eight colorless mana. Well, it's not new. It's a reprint, but it's new in standard and new in MTGA. Uh, eight colorless for seven loyalty. Plus two, Ugin deals three damage to any target. This is amazing with Fiery Emancipation, because again, you triple that damage. So if you have Fiery Emancipation down and then Ugin, his plus two does nine damage. Nine damage. It's a lot of damage. I mean, granted, you could do Fire Emancipation and just throw like a few shocks in some burn spells. Yes, I'm. Uh, I mean, that's. It's like boring shit. You just do Skewer the Critics, fucking Shock, Bone Crusher Giant. Like, you could do stupid shit, right? Who cares? That's boring. It's just. Bleh, bleh, bleh. Just. Nobody wants to look at that. It's boring. It's shitty, right? So we want to put it with, like, Ugin, because that's cool. Um, but also, again, turn four Ugin, fantastic. His minus X, exile each permanent with converted mana cost X or less. It also has to, has to have one or more colors. So this doesn't exile our Chromatic Lantern, which is also beautiful. The fact that all of our permanents are super expensive, being Double Visions 5, Chandra 6, Fire Emancipation 6, Ugin's Eight, but it doesn't affect Ugin. It doesn't hit anything on our board, usually when we end up casting it. So you really never have to worry about it. It's just amazing. And then uh, the minus 10 on him is you gain seven life, draw seven cards, then put up to seven permanent cards from your hand onto the battlefield. That part I've never been able to do, so we'll experiment with it uh, once it goes live, because again, this is, this is a video sponsored by Watsi. Um, for the pre-release event, so it was fun. Uh, and then, of course, we have Electro Dominance for a top end. Uh, this damage can also get tripled by Fire Emancipation, uh, but it's really there as a huge burn spell um, to hopefully get Ugin on the board or something else like that. But it ended up just being a kill more or a win more because if you Electro Dominance. And then into like a fire emancipation, you just like win. It's, eh. I mean, it's it's cool because I really like electro dominance with expensive enchantments. It's just when you're doing a damage spell with something that triples your damage, and you need X equals six to put it out, then the opponent takes eighteen damage, and they're at you know two life. And if they shocked in a land, they're just dead. So that's kind of lame. Um, I mean, it was fun. There's a lot of things we can change in a historic deck. But I think we would take out Electro Dominance, um, probably the Genesis Ultimatums and Chromatic Lanterns. So that already frees up 12 slots. We can do some shit with 12 slots. Like We can do a lot of stuff with 12 slots. Um, we could put in the, like the Wily Goblin that ramps. Um, we could put in like mind stones. We could we could do some stuff, but it, it is a pretty fun deck when it goes off. It just needs some it needs some love to the deck. It needs it needs some love. I fucking hate mono blue so much. It's like the one deck I cannot stand. Oh, oh so close it hit the rim. 
so close. <sighs> okay. I don't think this is a very good card. That's fine. We'll figure it out. Hello. Turn two thought erasure. Ooh. I would like to not have an Iron Craig feat for twelve hundred, Alex. One on top, I don't like it. Demir? They don't see it. They don't see it. Doesn't, I mean, it doesn't do anything. Got it. You got it. I mean, if we get a Genesis Ultimate, oh, it's Esper. Okay. Genesis Ultimatum would be sweet. They probably have a Tefri coming down, right? The four mana Tefri, or they they want to hold up a counter spell. One of the two. One of the two. On Genesis. <coughs> All right, you got it. You got it. Luckily, they countered that instead of the Electro Dominance. He thought it was true. In the top 13 cards. Ah, uh, yes. Hey, they discarded a quench. That means they have absorbs. I am not going to sit this one out. Oh my gosh. I need something. I've got it. That's a something. It is a something. I do like this combo with Chromatic Lantern and uh, and Ugin. I do kind of like that. Bet you didn't want to discard that Elspeth Conqueror's death now, did you, bitch? They probably have another one, right? Seven? Yeah. Rar. Ever see a volcano erupt in person? Hope it's not too hot for you. Rar. 
Rar. Ghost fire. Finally. My greatest creation. Get off this warning. Finally. <sighs> what does Soul Diviner do? For the tome. Moves counters and draws cards. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Now I remember why we can't play mono red because it has literally zero interaction with enchantments. Now I remember. Now I remember. That's a lot of mana. Um, might as well just do this, and then next turn we can hard cast double vision. Of course. Of course. Do nothing enchantment that gets bounced by Tefri. Got it. Got it. <sighs> Fuck, I can't wait to play Historic. The standard shit is terrible. There's so many more tools. So many more fun things you can do in Historic. It's like everything in here that's fun. Got another Tefri? Let me tell you, that would be delicious! Here we go. Yeah. Yeah, Historic pretty much saved MTG for me, I think. decide if I want to thrill a possibility yet? I don't think I do. Uh, can thrill on his turn and copy? Yeah, I just don't know what I would discard. I actually think I have to discard this. Yeah, I have to discard this, because I can Ugin and kill all that shit. Hmm. Interesting. 
three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so I need to land. Yep. Yeah, that's another double vision, sure. Okay. So we get basically everything. That shrine. Obviously going to kill Ugin. Or try to, whatever. So six, seven, it's 14 damage. Let's wait one more turn. Let's wait one more turn. Not draconic talents. Yeah. You got it. Might be a bad idea. Okay. This is part of my work. I will destroy if I must. So eight. Boom. Put that down. And then double vision. Put that down. Nice one. I like how that works. I like that interaction a lot. I couldn't tell you. Do I need to add a fourth thrill? I don't know why I'm still playing the same fucking thing. I need to change this list up a lot. Hmm. All right, I see you, opponent. Don't really need all three of those. Well, next turn we get to Ugin and just do it for three. So that's kind of cool. I like that. I like those two, those turn four Ugins. I like it. Yeah. So throw possibilities can be good now. That's a pretty sweet card. 
One mana instant cat sack creature. Draw two cards. I don't I don't want to Storm's Wrath because it fucking destroys my Eugene. Um Amateurs. It's fucking surrendering. It's fucking surrendering. Yo, what up, YouTube? Yeah, we going here, Strider. <laughs> Come on. You didn't really think that I was that type of person, did you? Thank you, everyone, so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you were even a little bit entertained by this video, please make sure to let me know down below. And if you have anything that you would like to see next, go ahead and leave that there, too. And make sure to check out my live stream five days a week, every day except Sunday and Thursday. Stream time's down below.